boom, we're live. Philip, thank you for coming on the show. I got to start off with uh, a question that I like to ask everyone. What is your favorite superhero? Superman. Awesome. Any uh, major reasons? Oh, no, just the overall theme and uh, for changing people's lives and uh, protecting them. Awesome. So that, uh, that leads us perfectly into how did you get started in all this? Where was the, you know, what was your call to adventure? The thing that made you dive into learning about how to help people, CBD and just everything around the ethos of the field? You know, I, my background was in medicine. I've been practicing for over 40 years. Uh, I was doing disease management. I left the, the, the conventional medicine a number of years ago, like 15, and I just uh, wasn't going to do a regular office practice. I was looking for more excitement and more things that I could do better. Um, and then working with a company and looking at uh, people with high risk and high cost diseases, I developed a disease management program that was highly effective using a medical nutrition therapy and partnering with a dietitian. Well, we worked out some great solutions, but it wasn't quite enough to take care of everything and everybody's problem. So I was looking for other solutions. So the dietary part, we were able to identify and what needed to be done there, but what about the rest of it? What about exercise? Um, and what about, uh, if, are there herbal substances that we could use that would be able to be substituted? Uh, for some of these toxic um, medicinals that, that were going on. Totally. And that's when I, I learned about cannabidiol. I looked over the literature. I was truly amazed. And I had actually tested for uh, people for drug abuse uh, in the past. Uh, 20 years ago, I was doing that kind of testing. Uh, and so I've, the, it's come full circle. And now I'm using it and recommending it for patients. And over the last four years, I've seen such remarkable uh, recovery and transformations uh, using cannabidiol in all manner of diseases that uh, I'm just blown away and I'm so passionate about how CBD can change the medical landscape mm -hmm. for uh, so many different diseases and, and have people recover with a, a full potential for life um, and vigor throughout their lives. Totally. That is one, that was awesome. But two, so with um, helping to manage diets and uh, utilizing that as a means of getting rid of diseases, helping to boost the immune system, what did you guys typically prescribe? What's your view on uh, using food as medicine? Well, working with a dietitian, she really taught me some of the key and fundamental things that I needed to know. Number one is it's processed foods are the big, big problem. Mm -hmm. And if you can eliminate those processed foods, you make a huge improvement to the point where we were able to uh, rectify arthritis, yeah. uh, depression, um, anxiety, many of these problems with the, uh, the right kind of diet. Reducing the number of refined and processed foods going to a whole food diet, but with the elimination of a lot of your high carbohydrate and high glycemic index type of foods uh, was absolutely instrumental in, in helping in all diseases. You know, diabetes is a carbohydrate disease. You eliminate the carbohydrates and the problem goes away for the most part, We're talking about type two diabetes. Yeah, 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 no, it's, um, it's pretty amazing just what whole foods, I mean, because a lot of people like, uh, they like to equate, you know, food with um, fuel. Uh, but on top of that, you know, carbs, fat, protein is all the nutrients and the nutrients that we don't even know exist yet and all this stuff. Um, and so it's like, at this point, eating good whole foods has such amazing ramifications for just the long term, if anything, it's a and that's absolutely true. But what I have learned is that food and the types of foods that we're using actually connect up uh, to the cannabinoids, our endocannabinoid system. And in fact, um, when you go into a fast, fasting is actually modulating the endocannabinoid system, and it's working on some of the same pathways. In particular, the PPAR receptors at the nucleus of the cell are being modulated by beta-hydroxybutyrate when you're in yeah. a fasting state. 
And, really? and that's the same mechanism um, that CBD uses to use epigenetic changes on the cell and change the cascade of anti-inflammatory substances that come out. So you're, you're working <laughs> in many of the same pathways. And I, I love to see the overlap that occurs uh, from using both of those effects. The other thing is that omega-3 fats are really, really valuable. But from taking it from the standpoint of the endocannabinoid system, you see that it's instrumental in forming some of the receptors mm -hmm. as well as some of the activators and the, the ligands that the body forms as part of that. And CBD won't work well without having omega-3s. So the, the diet and uh, the yeah. CBD actually come together. Wow, that is... That's very interesting. So it's activating, it's uh, working on beta hydroxybutyrate. And that's actually one of the supplements I know that a lot of uh, keto people like to utilize in order to help push them into ketosis. Makes sense during fasting. You're getting closer to that state. But we're starting to transition into it anyways. Let's talk about how... Let me just bring it yeah. back to the facts. So beta hydroxybutyrate signals the cell body in a very healthy way. Mm -hmm. For, through fasting or through uh, dietary practices. And CBD uses the same pathways. And mm. so there's parallel pathways. And so they can combine and enhance each other. And that's the point I was hoping to make. Yeah, totally. And you have, uh, you've talked before about how CBD and metabolism have this interplay. Um, is it using a similar pathway? Or how, do, how does CBD help to improve metabolism in someone that you know has never taken it before right down to the mitochondrial level cbd is actually penetrating those receptors that are in uh, the mitochondria that shift away from some of the energy patterns that the mitochondria are producing it also protects the cell uh, against uh, different types of inflammation and reactive oxygen species that could lead to the damage or destruction but that shift for the mitochondria uh, and actually, and within the, within the cell, is away from glycolysis and to a more energy productive way. You know, glycolysis doesn't really produce that much in the way of energy, but it does produce some in very important byproducts that the cell must have in order to maintain its full cell function. Mm -hmm. and, and CBD shifts that to um, more energy production and better synthetic products that the body generates, as well as anti-inflammatory processes that are there. And it triggers the mitochondria to be more uh, functional and actually increases the number of mitochondria that are in the cell. Oh, that is awesome. So how is it playing on something like, uh, I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with cardiolipin um, and helping to increase the, that heart of the mitochondria, uh, the action? So ATP production, everything like that. Well, if you're going to increase the number of the mitochondria, you're going to have more ATP production, but you're also shifting it to more of a um, away from the glycolytic cycle, which is not very productive, to uh, oxidative phosphorylation. Okay. And you're going to have a lot more energy being produced in that particular process. So there's a greater functionality. You know, the heart really relies on burning fat, fatty acids, and beta hydroxybutyrate as its major source of energy. And if you condition the brain, the brain will rely on that source too, without the inflammatory substances that are generated by glycolysis. Mm. Um, and that's the part of the disease that we see with neurodegeneration is, is yeah. a, an assistance or a, a um, dysfunction of the glycolytic cycle um, in the brain so that uh, they're not producing the energy that they need to. And by shifting over to uh, a fat metabolism, then you can shift the brain into a much more efficient and effective energy production itself. Yeah. Wow. That is that's very interesting. So now let's say we're not shifting diet at the moment, but we're just starting to supplement with CBD or something along that line. How does that have an interplay or how will that start to shift the body and almost make it, it seems like if it's activating similar pathways, it's going to make it susceptible and want and crave that other type of food or what is going to be healthier for it. How does just CBD, no diet change have a play on the body? Do I, I 
if people want to get the maximum benefit and they're always asking me, well, what should I eat or how should I take CBD? And I really recommend, and the evidence is very clear that it should be taken, it's best taken and best absorbed mm -hmm. with different types of diet, particularly some saturated fats. Yes. Uh, so that's the science. That's what that indicates. And the reason is because saturated fats are at least uh, the shorter chain or the medium chain, or actually even the long chain, are absorbed differently than some mm -hmm. of the other fats. Um, and they go through the lymphatic system. They don't have to go through the processing uh, with uh, through the liver and where you get a certain amount of degradation. Yeah. So, so sometimes those foods, and people ask me, that, and, I, and I want to enhance the effects and the results. Mm -hmm. So I talk to them about uh, dietary changes, what kind of dietary things are, are going to give them the best results. Uh, but not talking about uh, diet specifically, mm -hmm. if that's not the, the topic, um, how does the CBD change things for an individual? Yeah. Um, there, you First off, it works at the neurotransmitter level. So you're changing how, you're turning down the volume, I, I usually say, with regard to the neurotransmitters. Most of the time, people are suffering from uh, too many neurotransmitters, uh, or, but they could have too little neurotransmitters, yeah. and, and they're being dysregulated. And what CBD does is modulate those neurotransmitters so that they're working better. If there's too much of a signal that's coming on, CBD turns down the volume so that people get to a more even keel. There's a relaxation and a calmness that comes mm -hmm. over them. In other cases, there, it may actually lift up the neurotransmitters, like for a dopamine or serotonin, mm -hmm. so that there's a relief of depression uh, that happens with it. And, it. and it's modulating those things. So neurotransmitter is the first level. The yeah. second level is actually working on the immune system. And it's working at regulating the types of immune cells as well as shifting them towards a cellular type of immunity so that it's a, away from the hyper uh, immune responses that you typically see with autoimmune diseases. Yeah, exactly. And it actually turns down and reduces the number of inflammatory cells that might go into an area. But that takes time. That doesn't happen right away. And then the third level is what we were talking about earlier in terms of energy, shifting the metabolism of the cell, um, moving away from the glycolytic cycles and, and towards a reduction in inflammatory substances and yeah. a more efficient production of energy across the board in all cells of the body. So there's, there's three major levels. One yeah. more that we, we should talk about when we're talking about the, the endocannabinoid system and targets for CBD is the gut. Now, gut has more neurotransmitters than any other part of the yeah. body, far more than what's on in the brain. And regulation of the gut, um, healing some of those uh, leaky membranes that occur in the gut that create quite a bit of inflammatory problems, as well as normalizing the muscular activity so that it normalizes uh, how our gut moves. And one of the side benefits that I see with CBD is an improved bowel movement uh, profile that goes along with it. Wow. Okay, that is very interesting. Yeah, I've uh, I've read the second brain, um, and uh, done a lot of research on gut health. But that's awesome to see. So, is it actually helping with the bacteria that's inside, or more of helping to patch up the leaky gut and ensure that motility is going uh, efficiently? Well, it does have some effect on bacteria, but I can't. I don't have the evidence to say that it's shifting or changing the bacteria mm -hmm. in a major way. Specifically, CBD has been shown to be anti-staph and anti-strep. It also has antiviral property, hepatitis C virus, very interestingly. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. That's really cool. So uh, I did want to ask, because I know I've had uh, some antidotal from just people talking about taking CBD. Some, they say it didn't affect them the way they thought it was going to, or it wasn't uh, a positive response. And I wanted to ask if that was, if there's interplay between like, I know, let's say like you're taking caffeine or nicotine <clears throat> and you're using uh, CBD. Are there interplays between uh, what you're ingesting that could be negative? Like, should you stay away from something if you're trying to really supplement and get the most benefit out of CBD? Uh, no, I don't see negative responses very often. But they they can occur. Um, there was one theory that says that at very low doses, CBD could uh, cause a, an increase of edginess and anxiety, whereas um, the the full effect and the sedating effect 
comes on after you've taken a more substantial dose. Now, for my patients, I, I want to use number one is the first, the, the best quality of CBD oh, yeah. that I can locate. And I want them to be taking some standard that, that comes from a company that is producing a, uh, a product that is um, organically grown, that it's processed without solvents that are going to be residual, mm. uh, that it doesn't have any pesticides in it, um, and that it has a, a very a reasonable uh, quantity of CBD that isn't in a, an effective mode that they can absorb. And I'd love to see the analysis to say, what is that concentration and what's not in that yeah. particular concentration of product? Now, once you have that good product, then uh, and my time has been spent with a product that that I know very solidly, and so that I I can expect that 85% of the time people are going to respond. What I like to do is I like to have people take the dose right in front of me, or yeah. while I'm talking to them on the phone, because I hear the changes that occur in their voice, or I see them in their eyes when they take that first dose, mm -hmm. and I can guide them. Now, if they don't respond or they have some sort of negative response, then we can troubleshoot that. But and that only happens in maybe one out of 50 or one out of 100 cases yeah. where somebody has a peculiar response to it. But for most people, they take that first dose, and I'm looking for signs in their vision, uh, in their voice, um, in their movement, or just turning their head or their neck, uh, the amount of air that they're breathing. I can actually hear uh, the amount of breath that they're taking and the loudness yeah. of the voice and the octave of their growth voice that's an all an indication of what's going on. And then they'll give me symptoms of saying, oh yeah, you know, I feel relaxed and oh, I, you know, I, I, don't, I don't feel that pain anymore. At least it's not at the same intensity. And then uh, you know, classically, I'll hear them chuckle. Just a little bit of laughter. It's not a belly laugh. It's a matter of, a, oh, they'll just make a little, crack a little joke and, and yeah. they'll be humorous at the time. That's a clear indication to me that that's a CBD effect. And wow. I love to hear that because I know that I've changed their mood immediately and it's going to relieve a lot of any anxiety they have, any depression that they're, they're suffering with. And then we can move forward and I can give them further guidance on how to use CBD from that point on. Telling them that they need to titrate the dose to meet their particular symptoms, mm -hmm. uh, titrate the frequency um, and uh, the duration that they use it. They need to find out for themselves because everybody is so different in terms of how they respond to CBD. Totally. Wow. Okay. So I would love to go through what are you looking for when they take it and you notice those changes? Because I love like uh, with metabolism or certain things, you know, you eat foods, you get to see the rosiness of the fingertips start. Uh, you get to see you know, the relaxation that's coming, like fate, like color goes back to people's face if they haven't ate in a while and they eat. Something. Exactly. That's exactly what you see with CBD. You see okay. color come back into the face. They, if you ask them, they'll say, oh yeah, I feel a warmth or a tingling yep. all over. And one of those positive things, you, you may see their eyes widen. They'll just expand. Um, and you'll start to see spontaneous movements of the face. Whereas they came in with a mask and then suddenly they're they're smiling, they're expressive, and there's a lot of variability into how their expression is. So it's not flat, deadpan, one expression. And they're, they're spontaneous, their voice is going up, it's going down, uh, all type of variability. They're bringing in other ideas that you can tell that they're focused cognitively, they're asking good questions, um, and they're noticing changes in how they're thinking. Wow. That's so cool. Yeah. That's, I mean, one of my favorite things and I like to, when I, whatever I'm talking to people or anybody who wants to get any uh, use out of something is those changes that they can notice for themselves too. So they know if it's working or not, if they took something and it actually was what they thought they were taking. And, you know, cause a lot of people, and especially now with CBD starting to really get everywhere, you have a lot of people who are trying to sell snake oil or something that isn't uh, what they say it is, at least dosage wise. And, you know, it's always in the health industry. Um, but, but if they don't respond to that first serving, and I, I tell people, take what's on the, the serving that's on the bottle. Yeah. If they don't respond within three or four minutes and I'm not seeing any indication of the response, double the dose. Yeah. Double the dose right then and there and look for that response once again. And if that doesn't respond, do another dose. Try to get to that level. I want people to titrate up to their particular need right away to find out if it's going to be effective for their problem. 
maybe five out of a hundred, it, it, it won't be effective for that. They, yeah. they'll use the large amount and they're not getting any benefit. I want them to know right away rather than wasting time weeks after week yeah. not seeing the result. Then they know how much that they're need, going to need to be using over that month time period. And they see the response right away and what they should expect from using CBD. Totally. So what are some of the like unconventional uh, benefits or like ways that you can use, utilize it, whether that's like for performance? Because a lot of people think of CBD as, you know, I'm going to relax, I'm going to get rid of some pain or whatever's going on. But I know that there's always some awesome other things that you can do with it, like performance, like um, I know some of those pens are created with uh, CBD THC for uh, intimacy and sex and stuff like that. So what are some of the cool unconventional ways that you've seen it used? Well, so I'm working just with CBD. There's a minimal amount, almost no, uh, the 0.0, .0 THC that's really? in it. There's nothing uh, that's there that has that so the psychoactive portion of it. But the range of benefits are really quite surprising. Uh, now you pointed out one just then is that performance. You're coming on stage, you're gonna have to give a performance, um, use CBD to temper that. It's as good as or even more effective than propranolol, a beta blocker that's classically yep. used as that. In fact, there's some evidence to, and I've had reports that it actually reduces the amount of their heart rate um, when you're taken in large amounts. And so they've not had to use um, as much in the beta blocker in the conventional medicine as before. Uh, the other area, of course, is improvement in sleep. It, yeah. it doesn't make you go to sleep. It makes you more awake. And uh, one of the listings for CBD is about wakefulness, that it's used for people who are having to do uh, shifts, and it keeps them alert and functional. So the nice, nice issue there. An improvement of vision. Um, I uh, caution everybody who's taking CBD yeah. not to get a new set of glasses because <laughs> all they need to do is go back to their previous set of glasses and those should be working for them. Wow. Uh, and so the sleep quality, that's a whole topic in and of itself in that it increases alertness. But on the other hand, it actually improves the depth of sleep. You go into a deeper uh, sleep. Uh, twice as much time is typically spent in deep sleep. So it's a more restful and a relaxing sleep uh, that people experience. Not necessarily longer time periods, but a deeper sleep and a better quality that goes on with it. And then we kind of get into the area of, of performance yeah. uh, and, and a physical type performance, singing. Um, I had one voice instructor that went on to had a great deal more resonance and more power in her voice wow. as a result of using CBD. Uh, incredible sorts of uh, benefits. And of course, it cleared her skin from her psoriasis. Yeah. But oh, by the way, she's singing better uh, now <laughs> as a result of doing that. that is and awesome. for sports performance, one of the things with CBD, and you've noticed, is that you've got improved focus, not only visually, yeah. but also mental focus. And that's what those sports people who are in competitive athletes really need to have. They can stay focused on what they need to accomplish. Not only that, they'll have improved breath holding ability. They'll mm -hmm. hold their breath longer, um, almost twice as long in some cases. That means they can tolerate anaerobic conditioning like weightlifting or sprint. Yeah. They can do that better. And then the recovery is greatly reduced in terms of any soreness or any challenges that they have. And if they have an injury, it will take care of that injury on those areas. So those are the few of the benefits, the side yeah. benefits that I talk about with people all the time. So rather than side adverse side effects that we're usually talking about, yeah. I'm talking about all the side benefits that come along with CBD. That is awesome. So vision uh, is one of them that, why is it helping with vision? That's such a, that's one, an awesome benefit, but two, is it most people are constricting, they have constricted uh, ciliary muscles. And so it's starting to relax it and allow you to actually take in light and see better. Well, I, I don't know the uh, I don't know the exact reason that belong yeah. that's around that or why it is. We we know that it works on neurotransmitters, and of course, vision is an extension of the eye. Yeah. So we're really talking about light signaling and being converted to neuro mm. impulses that are going back to the occip occiput of the brain that yeah. are dealing with the vision centers. So there's connectivity issues that are there. Mm. Uh, so it could be related to that and reducing 
oxygen, uh, oxygenation um, and inflammation in those particular cell types. Uh, but I haven't been able to define it, and I haven't seen yeah. the literature that has actually said uh, what's going on with that. That's, those are observations that I get from patients, yeah. uh, and uh, they've been validated a uh, hundred times. So I know that they're actually going on with it. No, that is awesome. Yeah, I mean, it, it makes sense. I think a lot of people, you know, uh, especially with like how nearsighted everything is that we do nowadays, it is constricting those muscles. And you look at like um, in China, they've done studies on kids and they show that their muscles are so constricted that they really have hard, a hard time seeing far. So with CBD helping to relax the whole system, but in a productive energy state, which is what it seems to be doing, helping to increase mitochondria, helping to activate the more efficient energy pathways, that it would help to relax that so you could just let light in. Well, that, I mean, that's theoretical that, that you would relax the iris and you'd let more light in, but what the kind of improvement people are having um, yeah. is substantially at the retina level. Mm. So that the retina, you, you go start to go in, I could describe it as high definition mode. You know, you're yeah. looking at the conventional television and then suddenly you're looking at uh, 4K. Uh, <laughs> in terms of the, the detail that's there, uh, exquisite detail and, and sharpness of what's going on. So I think it's at the retina and it may be what mm. you suggested, the energy level, the energy level improving at the retina level. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Or it's the neurotransmitters that are functioning in more of a positive way. Yeah, so it, so improving the efficiency of mitochondria, the energy that they're producing, is that one of the reasons that it's helping with sleep and it's helping with focus as well? Because then your body's not like in a stressed energy state. I know a lot of times you're running off of adrenaline. Does CBD have an interplay with adrenaline? Well, it does. It, it does manage uh, a lot of the uh, hormonal effects. I didn't mention that earlier, and I should have, that it's regulatory on the hormonal mm. system. So it actually is uh, modulating the amount of cortisol that's being produced. Uh, and that's particularly important in PTSD, where cortisol is at least one of the perpetrators yeah. of problems. And chronic stress with high levels of cortisol, they may be involved in making people more anxious by blocking the endocannabinoid system. In other yeah. words, uh, cort high cortisol levels will actually block the endocannabinoid system so it's not functioning properly and we can't turn to normal. And you know, using CBD uh, upregulates the endocannabinoid system so that we can then uh, function uh, better with our endocannabinoid system and more balance. But on the terms of um, the uh, hormonal levels, yes, uh, you know, cortisol is being affected, uh, the uh, adrenaline um, and the norepinephrine, they're being regulated, those are neurotransmitters as well, and they're being modulated uh, along with CBD. Wow, yeah, that is so interesting. I know my sister actually used CBD for cramps, um, and I know... Uh, very effective, very yeah. effective, yeah. Yeah, it has so many applications, it's one of the most... Um, amazing things that seems to be almost like what you would say before you're like, Oh, just take an aspirin. Everybody was always like, take an aspirin. Now it's like, yeah, take some CBD. Well, I think it should be the first thing in your medicine cabinet that you reach for, yeah. you know, aspirin and Tylenol actually work through the endocannabinoid system. It's only natural that CBD also um, should be used. We were talking about um, COX inhibitors, uh, yeah. CBD acting as a COX inhibitors, which the aspirin that functions as. But they do uh, work together, and non steroidal anti inflammatories mm -hmm. actually work very, very well with CBD. The same thing's true for antidepressant. Wow. They work very, very well with CBD. They work in combination, and they're more effective that way. And the same thing happens too with opioid drugs that opioids have greater analgesic effect at lower doses, but without the adverse effects. Mm. Uh, in combining with CBD. So if you're somebody's having pain, the first thing that they should reach for is a CBD. Yeah. And if they need additional help, then either more CBD or using one of the conventional medications. Yeah. So does it have, and I don't know if you're versed in this, but an interplay with uh, psychedelics or anything like that in helping with, because I know that the interplay with neurotransmitters with anything like psilocybin or uh, LSD is massive when it comes to dopamine, serotonin, how it's re affecting all the receptors. 
have you seen anything with CBD and those? Okay. The only thing I can describe is with THC that it has a modulating effects on the THC and the, the psychotic effects that occur. And we do know that CBD is as effective as the best of the antipsychotic medications that mm -hmm. are available. So that's interesting with now, like with something like a depression medication, right? Which could have long-term ramifications if taken alone too, because it seems like CBD is almost acting as a protective agent with it as it's helping it increase in strength. Can you utilize CBD to decrease the amount of uh, antidepressant that you would be taking or how do those interplay? Look, you can reverse depression with CBD in a matter of a few days. Mm. There's no need to be using antidepressants yeah. in most cases. I tell people that because then they feel more comfortable with it. Typically, yeah. I will direct them to use CBD if they're on an antidepressant, use CBD, uh, lift their mood because they're, if they're coming to me, if they're talking to me yeah. about CBD, they're not completely resolved with their depression. Totally. You know, we've got, there's some evidence out there that the people who have committed suicide have been on antidepressants and that they may have yeah. a little bit like the opioid story is that, oh yeah, we've promised you all this about antidepressants, but in fact, they may be making things worse yes. in the long run. So my advice for people with depression is start on the CBD, get control of your mood, mm -hmm. uh, relieve that depression because it is instantaneous, um, and then drop off on the antidepressant. Now you can yeah. taper it or you can uh, just cut it off. Typically when I've told people to, uh, to taper it, they after a week they cut the dose and they stop yeah. taking it just really? because they feel comfortable with it. And CBD blocks those addictive withdrawal effects yeah. that you might get from some of these other substances. Wow. Okay. So that's, yeah, when I talk to people about antidepressants often, I'm like, listen, this isn't, uh, it's not pro-happy. It's not called the pro-happy drug. It's called the antidepressant drug. So it's helping to stop a lot of the depressed feelings. It doesn't mean it's making you feel better for life and happier, more vibrant and joyous. And it seems like on the other hand, you take the CBD, it's going to mute the negative effects of when you're getting off of it, but it's also going to help with the actual, the actual experiential part of life of seeing better, of feeling things better, of tasting food better. I know that's another uh, thing that CBD helps with. Another side benefit. It's very, it's, it's such an amazing thing. So, so no, there's I, one other thing that one other side benefit you get is an enhancement of compassion. Mm. You actually have a great deal of empathy that comes out that you have, there's more caring, there's more sociability, you want to interact with other people, you're able to express your feelings, and talk about intimacy and relationships, I mean, there is a very key area. And what a facilitator for psychotherapy or yeah. for further counseling or dealing with issues with your partner. Yeah, wow. That's I mean, it's literally one of those Swiss Army knife things that if you don't have it, it's kind of illogical not to have it. I know there's like a few things that I like to keep around. Progesterone's one of them just in case like injury or anything like that. CBD, sleep helps with just about everything. I mean, I try to stay healthy, eat healthy and do all that, but I like to supplement because it's fun to, I feel like a lot of people, you brought up Superman earlier, supplement and use things because they're like, yes, I could get closer to being like extra human. All that you can be, you, you know, it doesn't make you superhuman. It just lets you be everything your genetic code has allowed you to be. So you can go to your full potential. And that's, that's so important. Oh, yeah. it, it'll, and for some of us from the older generation like me, I mean, <laughs> it turns back the clock. So that yeah. instead of, you know, maybe 10 years or 15 years, People change with it in, a, in such a positive way. It's like a fountain of youth in many cases. Yeah, so you just brought up real quick all that your genetics can bring out. Is there any epigenetic research being done on CBD and how it has an interplay with like methylation of genes and everything in that line? Well, um, not that I know of. I mean, okay. I think it, there is uh, looking at the genetics and looking at the codes, the mm -hmm. SNPs that we have, and determining whether uh, you're going to be, you're going to need um, mm -hmm. additional cannabinoids or you're going to have a possibility of being more deficient in it. Um, uh, and also uh, looking at some of those um, patterns to see what kind of foods that you should be eating. Yeah. Right now, decide which 
uh, type of, are you going to be a fat burner? Or are you going to be a yeah. carbohydrate burner? You know, what's going to be the ideal for you? But I don't know of any research. Now, I'm in contact with an uh, epigenetic uh, uh, PhD that's yeah. uh, done quite a bit of research that, in that area, and I'm hoping I can interest her in doing some epigenetic yeah. uh, research on it. Oh, but, yeah. uh, you know, with respect to um, uh, some of the, the glutathione and yeah. some of the changes that are occurring, uh, I, I feel very, very strongly that there, there are epidemic changes that are happening with CBD, uh, just as a result of maintaining our normal function and uh, reducing the, the dangers and the effects of the environment um, on an individual or uh, our lifestyle onto the individual oh, yeah. and, and keeping uh, away from um, the, the dangers that uh, could lead to uh, transmission epigenetically and to our children uh, yeah. later on. Up to four generations has been found with the epigenetic yeah. patterns. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I love to see like a Pottinger's cats except with uh, CBD or something along that lines because it really is helping with, I mean, we have so much like unnatural, you could call it, stress nowadays and utilizing something to, you know, continue the genetic code at a, a good rate without all of the effects that stress can bring to your offspring, their offspring. And I know you were saying with the four generations, that was the Nazi survivor uh, study, right? Where they, I've seen some stuff where they're looking at people who survived Nazi concentration camps and like it's passed down that stress code over and over again. Well, I was specifically talking about some epigenetic studies that were done in animals, uh, mm. the particularly mice that showed that uh, uh, treating a particular or feeding a particular mouse mm. in a particular pattern uh, led to that, those same results in up to four generations. Wow. I, it's, that's one of my, my favorite things because epigenetics shows you like how impactful everything you do can really be. Yeah, this is a great excuse for blaming it on your parents. Yeah, seriously. I actually, I saw... And your grandparents and your great-grandparents. I saw the funniest news article. I hate the news. I normally don't look at the news, but I saw one of them and it was uh, daughter sues parents for being ugly. I was like, well, that's... Um, it's one of those interesting things because you're like, I don't know. She can't win it. Like, of course, the court's not going to be like, yeah, it's how it is. But there's a little bit of evidence for it. Well, she gets her 15 minutes of fame. Exactly, yeah. Or like whatever it was like a blip on my phone when I scrolled somewhere, that phone addiction. Um, so I always like to ask uh, if you have any high leverage skills or basically a skill that you know, you can learn in one area and you can transfer and apply it to so many other things. Learning to learn is one of them. Pattern recognition, um, learning to breathe better, but something that you've used time and time again that has really helped you to get to where you are today. Give me an example. Yeah. So, um, you know, some people say understanding failure, like a lot of times it's a mental paradigm or it's something that, you know, you can pick up and, uh, place but yeah learning to fail faster and adjust from that learning to breathe better because that can help you with sports performance it can help you with meditation it can help you in so many different ways but it's kind of like similar to how i'm envisioning cbd oil being like a higher leverage uh you know and uh accessory to life this would be something that's internal and that you can really utilize just everywhere and with everything you do I guess the, the skill that I seem to have a great strength about is if immersing myself into mm. an environment, let's say uh, a technical world, and then I start to make connections that, I, that were not uh, obvious and, and connecting pieces and parts to bring them together into a, a fluid uh, theory and concept that can be executed in a productive way. I've done that with CBD, and I've, I've been fascinated by it, by, by looking at the mechanisms that are involved uh, with CBD, what CBD does specifically, and then looking at the mechanisms of disease. Uh, how are these diseases manifesting? And then seeing if I could get these connections where, where it would theoretically make a connection and that CBD would have the potential of working on that disease. And very often that is exactly the case, which is why I'm looking for orphan diseases that I can use CBD on, use a trial of CBD 
and see if I can make an impact uh, on that particular disease. I've been so surprised by uh, some of the outcomes. Things like um, Huntington's uh, chorea, um, dealing with the sphingomyelia, which is where you get cysts in the spine. Mm -hmm. I would have never expected those kinds of outcomes, and yet um, they're happening and with great results. Uh, reversing dementia, uh, I'm just phenomenal. That's so cool. Yeah, that's, um, I mean, that's definitely something that most people can use too, is understanding the technical, the like really immersing yourself into what the thing is and then using it as kind of like the flashlight in the dark. Like, is this the thing that's going to allow me to see what's next? That is awesome. So is there anything right now that you're currently questioning? So, you know, it could be life, uh, politics, how doorknobs work, whatever it is. It's something that general consensus is like, yeah, it works that way. And you're like, I just really don't think it works that way. Well, I can tell you the area that I am really uh, focused on is our current medical system um, and how dysfunctional it is. Um, that we really need to have a comprehensive approach to somebody with a complex disease. Yeah. Instead, most of the time, it's a matter of going to this doctor and then he sends you to another doctor or, or another specialist. And all of this needs to be taken care of in, in one particular setting and one particular uh, group yeah. uh, so that if the physician is at the core and then you're working with the dietitian and the behavioral specialist, you've got the nurse there, you've got the exercise physiologist mm -hmm. uh, that's involved. So you're working really as a team and yeah. it's a coaching process in order to get out of a difficult and challenging disease process rather than see this doctor or say, okay, make an appointment, see the dietitian, and over here, yeah. make a counseling appointment, yeah. doing all that. It doesn't happen. And the results are abysmal in terms of taking care of some of these complex diseases. If we put it under one roof where we had a team of people taking yeah. care of an individual we're going to get a lot more results and a lot more successes um, in that model. Yeah. And it seems like that would also be one of the most conducive ways to have everyone share their information too. And I feel like when they're like, Hey, go to this person, go to that person, go to that person. Like you end up with all these different models that each of them are building and they're not really communicating like, Hey, what's going on here? Like, how was their diet? Instead, it's just like, well, the nutritionist will take care of the diet. We don't need to think about that. Like, we'll take care of this aspect. They'll take care of that. We don't need to think. Of, and it doesn't, it just leads to this disconnection, which oftentimes results in either not getting rid of the disease or something else. But some small countries have actually approached me about using CBD as part of a comprehensive medical plan for different diseases. Really? Uh, where diabetes is epidemic in some areas, using CBD along with dietary approach as well as exercise, uh, putting that together in a total plan and then delivering that to the individuals of the community, trying to reduce the amount of disease as well as the suffering from the disease at the same time. Yeah, wow, that is, that's awesome. I mean, I'm hoping that it continues to catch on um, just about everywhere because why not? It's, there's no harm in trying. Well, right now, I, I have a disease management program, and part of that program is to, is to help people with high cost or high risk type of diseases. Um, how can we do that? And we use uh, coaches uh, to guide people through the, the, the training and totally. the, the understanding they have to do or what the, the, the treatment options are. But we're also substituting CBD for mm -hmm. many of these high cost uh, drugs that have very relatively low effect, efficacy. And then even in cancer cases, using CBD to supplement in order to keep people from uh, developing complications from the chemotherapy and enhancing the anti-cancer effects of those particular drugs. Um, so you put all that together, we can use CBD to amplify those other medications yeah. and make them more effective or remove those expensive ones that are not really contributing to a great degree in the total health of the patient. And the result has been a huge amount of savings per individual, as much as $10,000 per individual wow. um, over a period of a year by substituting CBD at a fraction of the cost for these other medications. Also at a fraction of the risk. I think that's one of the major things. Very good point. If people are you know, hesitant, like so often we aren't hesitant to try the thing that is 
likely going to give you a disadvantage or an effect that you didn't want to have. I mean, just read the back of most labels. Something like CBD is an easy way to try something without, you know, that disadvantage or having to go, oh, I wonder what the side effects are going to be with CBD because they're very minor, if anything. Right. It's, it's like listening to those commercials, the tail end of the commercial where you show all the butterflies. You need, to, you need to listen up very closely because they're telling you all the adverse effects, like you may die exactly. uh, as a result of it. But, you know, with CBD, no toxicity at whatever dose has been used. Um, there's uh, no significant side effects that are associated with it, and it doesn't cause anybody any harm. I mean, I've, uh, treated for, I've treated people over the last four years um, for, uh, and I've never seen any significant complication from using CBD. Awesome. And so, um, what is a CBD that you recommend? Because earlier we were talking about it, you know, sometimes it's not pure, it's not organic, it has pesticides. Like, there could be some things wrong with it. What do you recommend? Um, and then what is the base dosage for that? So I've been working with Elixinol, E-L-I-X-I-N-O-L, uh, for the last four years. They really, they brought me on as a consultant with them and working with their products. Two days ago, I was in their fields, one of their hemp fields, really? and I was uh, looking at the ladybugs that were covering these, these plants and very near to harvest, as you could have yeah. imagined. Uh, and the pungent odor that was coming from these plants was, was really, really wonderful. Um, counting the number of leaves and the, the vigor that these plants had, it was really exciting to That's see awesome. all that. Um, it, I was able to, um, in a, a meeting of a Parkinson's support group yesterday, I was able to show off my muddy boots as <laughs> a result of walking in the hemp fields. That's awesome. Awesome. Well, so, I really like the, the Elixinol companies because they are, they're organically grown, highest mm -hmm. quality, very, very high quality. And they, um, when they harvest, they immediately get that to processing. So it, it's like awesome. fresh vegetables, you know, lettuce. You don't want the lettuce to, lettuce no. to be wasted. You want to take it for processing, get all of those valuable nutrients out of it. They do the same thing. And that's why they offer a, a full spectrum uh, CBD product that, that I've used uh, with great effectiveness. Awesome. Well, cool. Yeah, I'm going to be checking them out too because I just need to find one that, you know, isn't uh I was using a spray. I forget what it was. And it just tasted so bad too. It was just like Is that prime my body? Maybe. I don't know. To be honest, I don't know. I didn't it was my my sister's and I was like, oh, "I'm just going to take it, try it, see what goes on and uh use it that way." So I'm very uh, one of those self-experiment, like, oh, we'll try one of these, and okay. No, I didn't feel anything. I don't need to use it anymore. Or, wow, this was amazing. Well, you do want to make sure that you've used an adequate dose if it doesn't have the concentration. There's a lot of issues in looking at products that are on the, on the shelves, and totally. um, going to a dispensary is not the best place to go to. You yeah. know, in the state of Washington, an evaluation uh, determined that 85% uh, had pesticides in them for what was on the dispensary shelves. That's wow. really disturbing. There's not, there's not really any good controls. You know, for yeah. the products you're looking for, a global manufacturer, somebody who's producing products across the country and using almost a pharmaceutical grade in terms of their yeah. production facilities to make sure that it's absolutely the highest quality. And then, then you can feel confident in using as much as you need um, in order to get an effect or perhaps you'll fail and that, that CBD is not going to be the product for you. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And I think that's kind of what it comes down to self-experimentation, seeing what it, what works for you. I know they have lozenges, right. As well as uh, spray. Well, I don't, I don't know anything about lozenges, um, but I, I do like the sublingual approach for using any of the liposomal forms or the tinctures or even the concentrates holding okay. it in the mouth because that bypasses uh, the liver processing. So you don't get, okay. um, you don't get a degradation. Okay. And that's awesome. And you said, take it with saturated fat just to yes. bring everything full circle. Yeah. That uh, coconut oil is perfect. You know, yeah. it's medium chain triglycerides typically, and it goes through the lymphatic system rather than going through the di full digestive tract. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. Where can people find you before we sign off? Well, I do have a website. It's fairly simple at uh, Dr. Blair, MD, uh, dot Weebly, W-E-E-B-L-Y, uh, dot com.
fairly okay. simple. Um, awesome. I also work with uh, some uh, another group called ProHealthAdvisor.com, um, and they're a great group of dietitians that are doing fabulous things with disease management. I'm I'm delighted to partner with them as well. Awesome, and I'll make sure to put in all your YouTube and all of your different uh, areas on the show notes. So. Thank you again for coming on the show. And I'm sure I will keep you updated on how it helps me. It's terrific. Well, then you need to get some Elixinol and let me talk to you as you get your first dose. Awesome. Thank you. You bet.